Thank you. Well, I have lots of questions, and I, I'm going to try and be very quick so that we can all ask the questions of, of two very illuminating but rather distressing talks in some ways. Um, the, um, the, the first thing is that I want to thank the, the image. This Im Oh, well, let me put it into <coughs> top of view. Sorry. That this image um, was, was actually found by Antonia uh, Calaisil on a marvelous website all about artists thinking about activities with objects. Um, and then she was helped by Rahila Haq, and they both worked like fantastic whirling dervishes, um, to, as you were in touch with them, I think, um, uh, on the whole, on getting these two days together. So I'm extremely grateful to both of them. Where is Rahila? Anyway, um, so, um, so, so I, I just put together now some ideas just very, very loosely. They are, the, 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 a longer version of this is on the website, but I thought just to focus, since Lauren couldn't come today, I, just to give us a sort of sense of focus. Um, both the talks actually showed how important this idea of, of the space is, the actual shelter. So I was going to show you, so that's what you, know, you all know, you see it on the television all the time, th this kind of uniform anonymous space. And that was the first, the germ of the idea was how do, you, how do you make a place a home? How do you actually turn it into somewhere that you inhabit and relate to? And it isn't only the physical look of it, it's actually what you carry with you to it. So um, the, this drawing by a child in one of the refugee camps in Africa um, it gave me a kind of clue, because actually in the middle there, you'll see what I think is the cistern of water. This is the water delivery. And that's the only place where you see, in these children's drawings, where you see people gathering in not some kind of coerced situ situ situation. The, the children remember drawings of violence, of their houses being burned down, of, of you know, terrible things happening. But in this drawing, there's actually community and assembly around something which, of course, relates to the point Selma made, that the word for water is the same as the word for storytelling in Arabic, the root of the word. And, um, and so this is the source. And of course, in traditional terms, the well of stories or the, or the, washing, the washing place or the laundry, sometimes they were prohibited spaces. People, churchmen used to try and stop people gathering at laundries and, because they didn't like the, exchange, the free exchange of stories that happened. So this gave me the idea that maybe you could create more life and familiarity and a sense of exchange in such a community if you had a place where people met and told each other whatever stories. Um, so, um, of course, the human spirit is irrepressible. And even in Calais, this was the Ethiopians. They built themselves a church. Um, and actually, the, the interior of the church is beautifully decorated. Um, I don't have a very strong um, antagonism to religion, but I don't think religion should be the only source of stories. So I think that that is an actual, something that one should, we should bear in mind. I've just reviewed a book about the effects of the story of the fall, and it would have been better if the fall had been written differently, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so the, here we have Buckminster Fuller's uh, dome, which actually in the photograph that uh, David showed us, they had tremendous difficulty getting it to stand up. They didn't know how to do it. So Buckminster Fuller and his team there, the, the students, actually found a way of doing this. And since then, we can now all do it. I mean, it's, we, this is something that could go into the story box. One could just have the pieces, and it could be assembled quite easily. So this was at Calais, the jungle, the jungle in Calais, um, the Good Chance Theatre. The jungle, being an unofficial camp, was less subject to the kind of coercion that Ben Rawlins was, was talking about the sort of discipline. It also had many problems arising from its lack of discipline, but, um, but it, was, um, um, it, had, it was able to have a theater. Then Luke um, Jones, who's here, when, when we first talked about it, um, said that he thought that a space was constituted very much by its threshold, by its entrance. It doesn't it's not really the walls. It's more to do with the greeting and the, the, th the threshold you pass over. So I just put in a few images here. Uh, but this is a very famous, wonderful sculptor, Fred Sandbach. I don't know if you can see, but this, these are spaces constituted simply by string. Um, and we see that, actually, Richard Wentworth has done many wonderful photographs um, in Making Do and Getting By, showing how spaces are created by simply extending something across something. You can define a space with very, very minimal means. 
And then, and then by, you can change the atmosphere in that space by other, in other method, in other ways. A, a very good example of a portable, um, the most, probably the most best known portable space, and that I've seen that in action in uh, the Emirates. Um, and there it's just a roll of cloth around poles. So that, and you simply unroll the cloth and stick the poles in the sand, and then you have a windbreak, a shelter, and a, a, a demarcated communal space. In this case, explicitly, as you see from the chairs, explicitly from gathering together to hobnob. Um, Caucasian short circle, another example of a, a, a space that is actually extraordinarily powerful. This is the safe space that children create um, when they play a game. You're going to be, that, that's heaven and that's hell, and we just chalk it on the ground and we show you. Um, Joan Jonas, fantastic performance artist, uses this technique throughout her performances. Here you see her in action. Draw, oh, you can't see it because it's not, it's too, it's not dark enough, the picture. But anyway, she's drawing with a stick, with a chalk on the end of the stick. She's actually drawing a kind of magic circle, which then becomes a precinct in demarcating and defining one area from another across the stage. She creates these different spaces. Um, children, there they are drawing in marvelous, marvelous work by Helen Levitt on children playing in New York. Um, and this is my favorite. That seems to me to epitomize the act of imagination in relation to space. So I feel that that should be the door of our, of our, of our box. <laughs> and you, in you go. Um, so the, then the most practical um, version of a sort of portable imagination in action machine um, are carts, wagons, barrows, and vessels. Sicily was very much the uh, pot place that we chose. Um, I mean, it sort of chose itself because, of course, it's been the uh, crossing point for many, many peoples for many, many centuries. Um, but also because it actually still very much shows this history in a very rich way. It's very, the, the Arab, the moment of, well, the 200 years of Arab rule in Sicily are still very highly visible in its monuments and in its food, above all, it's a lot of the language. In fact, some of the groups we've made are, shows this, the Arabic words in Italian. So, um, and, um, and, they, and then before that, the Greeks and the Phoenicians and so forth. It's, 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 it's on some maps, it's the center of the Mediterranean. It is to some extent still the center, the confluence of the world that is being policed now not to be a world in communication, but a world in separation. And that's, so one of the places, one of the folkloric places where the survival of very ancient stories um, continues is on the carts, which are no longer really used or made by, by because now they use these ones. Oh, sorry, th that's an old one. So, and I'll just tell you a bit about the story, but now they use these ones, uh, which are very delightful, I think, and also, um, but they, the, these, these carry stories that go right back to the, you know, the 10th century, the uh, story of the Chanson de Roland appears on these, the characters from the Chanson de Roland. The Arthurian cycle is present on these, in these stories. And, the, and they connect to stories that have also survived in the Arabic tradition and so forth. So it's, there's, a, there's a real sense of a mutual conversation which could be stimulated and re re revived again in, in the imaginations of the people now making a community there. Um, so there's a wonderful vegetable barrows. This is one Joan Finer made, um, which is what he, he first, he told me about it. This is a shopping trolley, not a very large cart, but a small cart, and it's a musical instrument. You can probably see that it's been, it's been adapted. Um, there is a little film online about it. Joan is here, and we might, but I think this idea is a wonderful adaptation of the, of the um, that, I saw that was interesting because it said putting down roots in London on this, this is outside Sloane Square. Um, it's, a, it just, it's a London barrow. It's a, it was still used. We use them more actually than the Sicilians use the caretti. We still have a lot of London barrows uh, selling vegetables in our streets. Um, the Kabakovs um, artists have created a, a, a ship and the sails are, sorry, the sails are stories written by uh, the local community where they rebuild the ship. So the ship is built in different places, has been built in different places um, in, and uh, assembled in the, and created with a sail with the stories, which is a very beautiful idea. It's a different kind of vessel. 
we don't have to think of vessels only for land. We can think of vessels for sea too, because Sicily is surrounded by sea, and many of the migrants have had a huge, huge experience of the sea. Um, so boxes and crates, this is the, the, so here we move into the uh, kind of uh, barrel organ style. This is Cairo. Um, actually, uh, the, the wonderful team were quite keen to have this one uh, as our picture, but I thought that maybe this was a child beggar and we probably shouldn't uh, encourage such um, uses of children any, anymore. But it nevertheless has this incredible joy um, in the, I think, in the movement of the little boy. Perhaps little girl, I, we can't tell. Um, huge, huge tradition, which has actually largely been forgotten, of ambulance storytellers using painted scrolls, and that is literally worldwide. It's, it's, it's very, the British Museum has examples from India, from Indonesia, from China, from Japan, and, he, and here there are numerous prints showing, showing storytellers in action. And this would be unpacked from a wagon the, and, and could, of course, be added to. You could, and it would have strolling players attached as well. Um, I liked this. I liked, uh, this is not really a story one, but I liked this idea of the stack, the sort of the modular, the modular possibility. Ligia Pape, I don't know if any of you have seen her work. She, she's, she's interesting because rather like the Bauhaus uh, Black Mountain connection, uh, she was a very strong avant-garde experimentalist who worked a lot with the children in Rio de Janeiro, made an amazing study of shanty towns as forms of architecture, a survival architecture. And Ligia Pape also created a lot of boxes for fun. And this is one of her boxes. She, she made films in which people are bursting out of boxes, and so she's, she's worth looking at um, for a more. But you hear, here you see an aspect which the, I, I think is important to our project, which um, was also very central to Joseph Albers and Annie Albers' work, and what you said about pottery and weaving. And that is a word you, haven't, you didn't use, but phenomenology. These, the, this, this, is, this is very sort of hands-on sens sensory knowledge. So the, link, the idea here is that language, that absolutely important passport to emancipation and belonging, comes through sensory activity. It's not the other way around. And we probably all know that when we've learned a language. You don't really learn it off the blackboard. You can learn a bit off the blackboard. But the way you learn it is if you're handled by somebody as a child, or if you're actually having a love affair with someone, you then learn their language. It's, it comes through the body. And, um, and so the idea in, the, in, the bar, in um, Black Mountain was they would send them, and Bahas, they would send them out and say, you've got to find something rough, you've got to find something gritty, you've got to find something smooth, and come back with these things and learn what these textures are. And Lydia Pape was very involved in that. And what, though I'm extremely keen on the emancipatory effects of the internet, as Ben was talking about, and creating spaces that are virtual spaces for people to speak, it's also one of the losses of the internet era, generation, is of course this sensory and haptic encounter, which is important to assembly. And you see, these, the, many of the refugees in Sicily have arrived alone. They have no, no relations with them. They sometimes have, they, I mean, isn't this right clearly? They don't have, the people not even from the same village. They arrive alone, and then they're on their phones. So the aloneness is constituted also by technology. And that was something that this, the idea of, the, of this active storytelling, this idea of community and assembly, is meant to sort of resist. They're actually not um, themselves as uh, to, to be with. They're not nearly as isolated in feel as our young people are, interestingly. They're much more able to sort of touch you and you know, be, be kind of... Uh, they, have a, they have a lot of trusting... One of the best moments for me in Sicily was when I was t doing one of these groups, and um, they asked me to repeat something, uh, explain something and repeat it. And one of them just lay down and put his head in the lap of another one, two 18-year-old boys. Just one of them put his lap to listen to this, what I was going to say. And it was not at all sexual. It was just utterly confiding, trusting in, 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 their, in their being. And that was, I, mean, I thought that was exemplary, really. Um, the Eames is made a splendid, it's terribly expensive. You can, it's sort of, I don't know, hundreds of pounds. So one can't buy it for one's children, but, um, but it's a marvelous object. It's a sort of modular, incredibly adaptable um, box, which I think we should steal from them since they've made it too expensive. 
Then, um, then this, of course, was the, this is, some of you have seen this in action in Sicily. This is the, the ideas box of ideas without, of um, libraries without borders. And um, this is what, give, what um, is closest to our idea, but it's different from ours in the sense that it's, um, it was designed by Philip Stark, and it's got that sort of look, that sort of industrial look. And it's, of course, terribly tough and, and survives any sort of amount of battering, which is good. But my feeling is it's not haptic enough. It's not sort of personal enough. Um, so, but it's also, it's a, it's a pedagogical tool. It's an excellent tool for creating a classroom in a camp. Have you seen one in action? No. There's, there's one in Burundi. They cost 100,000 euros, so they're expensive. Um, we want to keep ours really low cost, made of scavenged materials, nothing, nothing expensive. You know, so it could be made, rep replicated very, very low cost, and also not become an object of exchange, not become part of a black market of goods. And, um, and the other thing is that it's digital. Now that is very good for what Ben was talking, and we want to, we want to hook onto them, we want to use them, because they go into the camps, they have access to anywhere, um, because they're books, books without border, libraries without borders, they, they're very approved of. And, um, and, so, and they're keen to do that. Unfortunately, the, 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 some, the two people who were going to come have family problems, so they didn't come. But um, she, they, they assure me they're still on board and they want to be part of it. So, um, the, um, so, so they have a huge server, an enormous, massive server, and therefore they can actually handle a lot of data. There are a lot of books on it for reading, literacy skills. There's a lot of mathematics on it for teaching that, and there's a lot of um, and, and and they can use rec and they're recording and uh, cinematic. Um, um, each box has a different use, so it's a very powerful and very useful, uh, important tool. Um, but it doesn't, and they acknowledge this. This is why they want to collaborate with us. It has no imaginative dimension at all. It's purely factual, uh, technical skills, for, which are essential for survival, but nevertheless are not nourishing the rest of the um, human person. Um, so then, um, okay, then the other, to go to the other extreme from the crate, from the sort of metal crate idea, um, there is the idea, very, very, very um, obviously fundamental to nomadic existence when it is chosen, chosen nomadic, elected nomadic existence, and that is the, the bale or the bundle. Um, uh, if you start looking for human ingenuity in carrying things, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> journey. So I only put in two uh, sort of early 16th century ones just to show you how you know, extraordinary people have thought about how to carry things. Um, th this is a cook, and I did actually think that a canteen or a kind of like a food canteen could also be a, be a sort of model for such a box. You know, the, the way you, or the, that, that, those baskets actually, that, that tall tower of baskets also like a food canteen in India one, or China, one on top of the other. Um, uh, the idea of the double, the double bag, the saddle bag, um, because if it's a barrow, one could actually put the kit, the sort of content part of it, across the, in the barrow. Um, I like the idea of the roll, the, uh, the, the idea of the jewellery roll, but in large, and the, because the, it seemed to me that the material, uh, that, that such a bale could actually become a space. I mean, that the material used for the bale could be opened up into an actual floor uh, carpet. Women, the great bearers, not to be forgotten, though most of the refugees in Sicily, are, the majority are male, um, women carrying things have always shown astonishing <coughs> cleverness at how to tie it and hold it. Um, I, I put that in to remind you that the bundle on the end of a stick um, used to be a, a form of um, luggage. Um, and then, so there's more of these. I've got one or two more of these. Um, just to remind you, and that, so bringing it up to date in Sicily. So it's still going on in Sicily. Um, I, there's one a photograph I took myself. They were raising money for a puppet theater. And um, he was a singer in the opera. And he was singing the uh, ballad of the 
um, Baronessa di Caraini, who was killed by her father when she fell in love with a local lad who wasn't of the same rank as she was as an aristocrat. And he killed her. And the story, the story board at the back there shows the story. And he was singing the ballad. And this was an example of a very, of a, it would have been a newspaper piece in the 19th century. Uh, in fact, Leonardo Shasha, the great Italian writer, has done, done a, a little story about it. Um, so it's an example of this movement of real life into imaginative life, into a very ancient form, the ballad, into the street life um, of the city as it still, as it still happens. Um, and that's in Iran. Um, that's the closing, the closing um, slide, just to show that it's still, you know, um, a, a practice in in many many countries. Um, we find it's perhaps here a little sort of folksy. We sort of feel it's a little bit cozy and folksy, but I think it doesn't have to be. I think it can be a, a, a method of communication. Um, we, the rest of the day, we will be looking, clearly Abartoli will tell us about Giocherenda, which is the workshop that Valentina mentioned. And we have some of their, the work that they've already created, um, really, since our last workshop, which was in May. Um, and um, she will talk about that later, and you'll see the sort of directions we're trying to go. Um, but I hope that that gives you a little bit of a sense, because what, what we're going to do after lunch is divide you up into groups by asking you to pick a color out of the basket. Um, and then you'll just be allotted to your leaders. Your, your, um, the, there are some leaders in the room. The people have been, have been chosen and, and have agreed. And um, <laughs> some of you didn't agree. <laughs> so, um, and, um, and then um, it, I hope that gives you a sort of sense of where, we, where you might go after that. So now we should have some questions, yes, shouldn't we? Yes, Selma, wonderful. come back. Thank and, you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Come back. Come back. Come back, come back. Come back then. Mm.